Uh, I can't see you. Is that fine? Uh, yeah, we're actually gonna do it, uh, video off. It, the connection gets kind of fucked up. Okay, so should I have my video off? Uh, yeah. We'll just go audio only. Uh. There we go, there we go. My phone? Yep, everything works. Can you hear me good? Uh, yeah. Oh, perfect. What's going on, man? Uh, nothing. Just hanging out. I hear Hello, you. Yeah. Where are you calling from? Uh, New Jersey. Oh, shit. Where, where in uh, New Jersey? Uh, well, I live in Marlton, but the band's based out of uh, Cherry Hill. Okay, so that's uh, Southwest, right? Uh, yeah. We're like right outside of Philly, I guess. Okay, all right. Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from a uh, town called Kearney. It's right outside of Newark in Jersey City. Oh, so you're in Jersey? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, actually, you just got back from the uh, Red Bulls game. Do you follow uh, soccer at all? Uh, no. I'd... No. Yeah. And ended <clears throat> up uh, losing, so that was the end of that. They lost in the playoffs, so. Uh, that sucks. Yeah, it should happen. I mean, it's, it's only a fucking sport. It's not like we're like the Cubs or anything where you have to wait 108 years to win a championship. <laughs> yeah, you're right. They are on their way, though, of losing for the next 108 years, but <laughs> oh, don't yeah. want to jinx that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would suck. Yes, yeah, well, but eh, what are you going to do? So, uh, do anything uh, good this weekend so far? Um, no, nah, just uh, honestly a lot of riding. Uh, I just went riding on Harley with my brother and stuff. What, uh, snowboarding or skateboarding? Uh, uh, I have uh, a Harley. So oh, yeah. oh, actual, okay, motorcycle. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. How long have you been riding it. one of those? Uh, a couple of years. Okay, so you're still, like, fairly new at it? Yeah, relatively. Like, uh, like I rode dirt bikes when I was younger, but I got, like, my motorcycle license, like, two and a half years ago, I think. Okay. How, how difficult is it to get one of those? Is it, like, fairly it's, simple, or? Yeah. You know what you're doing. It's incredibly easy. <laughs> and how many people don't know what they do, what they're doing? <laughs> uh... A lot, I guess. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it's it's smart for you because motorcycles are, they're cost efficient. They don't cost that much to buy compared to like a car. And plus, like the gas is like really cheap for that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's cheap. But like uh, my bike was more than my car. <laughs> and uh, Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. It, it is incredibly cheap for, uh, for gas, though. But uh, – it depends on how much you ride it and how far you go. Like, I don't just ride at places. Like, me and friends, me and my brother, will just kind of just go. I mean, that's, that's that's like the point of getting a motorcycle. It's like the freedom, more or less. You get to drive exactly, anywhere you yeah. want. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. That's that's awesome. I mean, I, I wish I had the balls to go on a motorcycle. I'm just scared shitless because, like, I'm one of those people that are like, oh, my God, I got a break. Let, let me just <laughs> lead to the left all the way and just fucking, like, screw up my leg. <laughs> yeah, that that would suck. Yeah. Any, um, did you break any bones yet or not yet? <laughs> no. Okay. Not, well, not, not from that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, God almighty. So, anyways, you're in chasing safety, obviously. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, and you uh, actually have a uh, big show coming up. You have a um, you have the Outer Loop Records show at the studio at Webster Hall. That's November seventeenth, yep. and you're playing with a, a lot of great bands. You're playing in uh, you're playing with M Migash. You're playing with Youth and Revolt, and you're playing with Lorna Shore. Yep. God Almighty, that is one crazy ass lineup. If you honestly look at it. <laughs> Yeah, it, n none of us sound like each other. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty crazy for a label nowadays, even though, you know, it's basically about, you know, who has the best fan base and who sounds the best. Like, it's not like, you know, Rise Records was in, like, the mid-2000s two thousand, mid and, like, early, like, 2010s, where everyone had that Rise Records sound, and you know exactly yeah. what I'm talking about, so. That's what... At that point in time, that's where the money was, so that's what they were going for. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now it's all now it's all about like, I think it's like half like gent, like half sounding like periphery, and the other half is like really like emo-ish pop punk, like the Wonder Years type of deal. Mhm. Mm yeah, it's kind of all over the place, in my opinion. It's yeah. just like, uh... you know. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you there, man. But, so. Yeah, I didn't know if I lost you. Yeah, it, it sounded like you did. I was like, uh, is he making a point, or was I supposed to jump in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. But, but yeah, and, anyways, you're a, uh, according to your Facebook, you're a hardcore and rock band, and you've, you've guys been around for quite a while, right? Uh, yeah, we were, uh, we've been chasing safety for a few years now. Um, we've, and we've been touring together for like five years now. Um, this is our sophomore album under the name Chasing Safety. Uh, we signed to Outer Loop Records and created this band. And um, yeah, that's pretty much. And I guess we're a hardcore rock band. We don't really know what to call ourselves, so it's easier just to say we're a rock band. Yeah, eh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with with that. You know, it's yeah. a, you know, you you're not like the uh, you're not like Hinder or anything like Nickelback, that kind of rock. You know, you actually have yeah. some harder elements to it, and yeah, I mean, it, it's it's working obviously if you've been a touring band for the last five years. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's cool. Uh, people seem to dig it. This album's a lot different from our last album, so we'll see what people think about it. Um, so, because it is a lot different, so it depends on how picky our fans are. <laughs> <laughs> and the sad part about fans is they could turn their backs on you in like a heartbeat, which is pretty sad to oh say. Oh my but, god! Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I know we have some fans that would never do that. I know we have some fans that some cool people that we see every time we go to the same or that city. Yeah. That I know they're gonna support no matter what what we put out, even if it's complete garbage. But there are definitely fans that just because we changed our style a little bit, they'd be like, all right, fuck y'all, and then bounce. <laughs> exactly. You sold out, guys. Fuck yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know where that sellout thing would ever come from because we're all still broke. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, how many how many bands were labeled as sellouts and they still just were still living in like shitty studio apartments? Yeah. There's... Uh, way too many. That's just what fourteen-year-olds on the internet run in their mouth because they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I, you know, I. That's what I love and hate about the internet. I, I love and hate that people have a voice. And, exactly. Yeah. Because some people don't need one yet. <laughs> exactly. But if no one had a voice, we wouldn't be talking right now. So uh, uh, that, this is complete true. Yeah. But I, I, I just wish that, like, you know, do, do you watch South Park at all? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Well, in this season, they're uh, they're doing stuff with like internet trolls, and they're like basically making fun of that and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. the in in the show, the Danish government came out with a way where you could actually put in a troll's like screen name or username, and it pops up exactly where they live and who they are. Now, imagine mm -hmm. if we had that in real life. Yeah, a lot of people would be getting their ass kicked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although I'm kind of shocked that it isn't like a YouTube series yet where people find out exactly where these people live and then go to their houses and beat the shit out of them. Yeah, me neither. I'm sure it happens. They just are smart and don't film it. Yeah. But we are in a weird society where, you know, the whole website, worldstarhiphop.com, is like, it caters to that shit. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I guess there's a market for everything, right? Yeah. And, and if there's not, you just have to keep working at it until, you know, there is a market. Yeah. Yeah, especially in music. Like you could take a, a band like Enter Shikari, who's been doing this exact their exact sound for the last like you know ten close to fifteen years now, and yeah, like now they broke school. out. Yeah, now they're breaking out. Yeah, well they uh, they were huge when I was in high school. Then I thought they broke up, and then we got a show offer with them, and I was like, oh shit, Enter Shikari's back. But <laughs> apparently they never left. No, I, I mean they're. It's funny because they're like massive in England. Like they he they headline yeah. like Download Festival, and you know they play arenas. And over here they play like Gramercy Theater. And you're like, wait, that's yeah, the like same clubs. band? Yeah, yeah. But it's crazy. There's a shit ton of bands that are like that where they're huge in uh, other countries. It's because uh, America's very picky, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but the weird part is, if you make it in America, you make it in the world. Yeah, essentially, yeah. Yeah, because like England is like they listen to Katy Perry, they listen to Bieber, they listen to all these acts that like came out of America, but you know, mm -hmm. an an act from England is you know it's it's hell making it over here in the states. Yeah. So un unless you're a part of like a unless you're a part of like a British Revolution like the Rolling Stones and the Beatles were, you're not getting it. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. <laughs> but, I feel you on that. 
I, I mean, that could that could be a good thing for you guys. You know, meaning that you know it's not like you're ginormous in one country and have to keep going back there, which would be yeah. cool. But oh hell yeah, I'm trying to tour overseas super soon. I, that that'd be awesome. Yeah, in, it's it's definitely like in the European markets where they appreciate metal. Like I mean, mm -hmm. it, they, For they sure. yeah they still haven't a hundred percent like got behind metal just yet in America, which is, which is weird because like eighties hair metal bands were fucking huge. Like Bon Jovi was ginormous. Uh, fucking Motley Crue was ginormous. Like you yeah. have all these bands and then like once grunge came out, they're like, Ugh, yeah, fuck metal. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I don't think that there will be another Rolling Stones, Aerosmith, ACDC. I don't think that it will be that level, at least probably not in the near future people are too uh too into like rap and pop music and more of like a crowd pleasing style of music Th those bands all got huge during an era where it was almost like an like their whole generation was rebelling by listening to that stuff so yeah i mean it's definitely true but mm -hmm. And it's it's weird though if you think about it like go back to let's say 1996 or we're going back 20 years ago where mm -hmm. if you listen to any other country besides Garth Brooks you're a fucking weirdo and mm -hmm. if you listen to any like EDM other than let's say like Moby or something like that you're a mm -hmm. fucking weird <laughs> yeah and and now it's all you that's all you hear on the radio yep that's literally it because so, it's a lot of it's mindless and people like mindless i guess yeah people don't want to think too hard or like listen to an entire album they want something quick three minutes catchy same thing over and over again boom you sold a million records yeah. yep you shake your ass to it people buy it yeah exactly so like you'll 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 never see a band like um Oh, for example, like like Coheed and Cambria, like they are big, but with a niche audience, like they will never yeah. be in the mainstream. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, there's a, there's like a lot of great bands. I think that all ended like the the prog rock scene with like you know Dream Theater and Rush. Like I think Rush was like the last yeah. biggest mainstream rock, you know, or mainstream pro, uh, prog metal band that came yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. Rush is. A fucking weird it's good i like it a lot but i'm saying it's weird for how big they got because they're not like your standard music you know what i mean yeah they're their own thing yeah they are and it's weird because you know back then when like rush was getting popular and popular you know people saw it as oh only nerds listen to that shit mm -hmm. and like no one like really gave him a shot until like you know radio stations start picking up they're like this is really different but this is catchy and it's also like you know it's also it's it's tough to play their music and you know it's not easy at all oh yeah no way yeah but i mean i mean it's it's all about simplicity unfortunately mhm mm but a anyways any simplicity with your new album nomad coming out <laughs> uh it's a lot i guess yeah to be honest, it's um, a lot different from our first album. Our first album had a bunch of solos and shit in it. We don't really have that in this album. Not because we don't like it anymore, just because we wanted to... We didn't really write this album the way that we wrote the last album. We wrote the first album, it keeping in mind, like, oh, what's cool? What are people going to like? Like, what's different? What's this, that? Like, trying to please everyone and their mother. But with this album, we kind of were just like, can we not fucking care about anybody else and just write an album that we think sounds sick and just hope for the best? So that's what we did. We just went to the studio and we wrote a record. And at th that point in time and currently, we're all into just like riffy rock, just like simple, dirty sounding riffy rock music. So that's what we wrote. As, as long as it fucking works and as long as you yeah. like it, you know, there's yeah. nothing worse than writing a record that you think is going to appease to people. It completely bombs. And then you're like, okay, well, what are we doing for the next two years except playing these shitty songs over exactly. and over? <laughs> yeah. So we just did a record that we all think is sick that we would listen to. And believe people like we released our first single brand new prison. And, uh, some kids are like running their mouth about how we 
don't have no riffs or no uh, solos and shit anymore. <laughs> but whatever, like this is <laughs> like we like it. We're stoked on the album, so that's really all that's important to us at this point. Like, and we didn't want to put out the same album twice because why would somebody want to listen? Just put out season of the dead part two. You yeah, know what really, I mean? So yeah. we wanted to do com- something completely different. Yeah, it it sucks because people will be asking for that. They're like, "Oh, why don't you make another album sounding exactly the same?" And then you do mm-hmm. it, and then they're like, "Ooh, why did they put that out? It sounds exactly like this." You're like, "What the fuck yeah. do you want?" <laughs> exactly. But truthfully, like we didn't really get too much hate, like on our first record, and then honestly, I think that that's one of the reasons why it didn't do as well as it i think it should have because uh if people are just like oh it's okay i don't really like it no one takes the time to to comment on it and stuff like that like if they actually don't like it but if they hate it then they take the time and then word of mouth and any publicity is publicity and then kids talk about it so if some kid posts our video and is like oh this shit's fucking trash their friends could listen to it and be like, that's actually sick. You're an idiot. You know what I mean? <laughs> and nine times out of ten, it's usually that. <laughs> yeah, so I'll take one kid bashing our band if ten of his friends buy our album. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I mean, that's what the music business is. It's like a lot of people are, you know, if you could create something that will have such a negative effect on someone where they actually get so pissed off and say, you know what, I'm going to write this band about how much I hate their album, but I'm also going to post a link and I'm also going to comment. And like people don't even realize that, you know, the more YouTube comments that there are on a video, the more popular it becomes. Yeah. And then there's so many times where somebody has been like, oh my God, this trash i can't believe so and so label signed them and then i'll listen to it and i'll be like this is awesome and then i'll get their album and i'll listen to it front to back like a bunch of times you know what i mean <laughs> absolutely so so it, it it's better you got to have some give and take i guess yeah i mean we'll de- definitely take a lot of shit if people are going to give you money <laughs> yep that's basically what it comes down to and uh yeah. so this album is coming out what january 3rd january 6th january 6th i'm sorry No worries. Nice, man. Yep, it's coming out, and pre-orders are already up, uh, and they're so cheap. You can get a bunch of really cool shit, uh, like hoodies, hats, T-shirts, a bunch of limited edition stuff that we will not be carrying, like, personally or at shows and stuff. You can only get it with the pre-orders and on our online store, posters and all that cool stuff. So they're actually really cheap. I know... They have a one bundle where you get everything, and it's only like eighty bucks. It's oh come on, people! That that's a fucking yeah. steal. Yeah, it's like a hat, a hoodie, two shirts, a poster, and a CD for like eighty bucks. Jesus Christ! You're you're wiping out their merch store with only yeah. eighty bucks. <laughs> yep. Wow, that's pretty cool. So I I gotta ask you, what what's the meaning behind the ambulance on fire? That's basically <laughs> your cover art. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So. Our drummer, Luke, found this news article of a fireworks truck, like a truck that was carrying fireworks, caught on fire, and fireworks started exploding in it. <laughs> and then they, the, the car had to pull over, and it pulled over in like a scenery like that. It was like a box truck, and it was on fire in the back. And we, we just thought that that was the coolest-looking picture ever. <laughs> and uh, the album's called Nomad, has a theme of being uh, alone and by yourself so like the the landscape gives that feeling so we just wanted to recreate it with our like our thoughts so like we recreated the thing put an ambulance in there set the ambulance on fire we just we honestly just wanted it to look fucking sick (laughs) so that's what yeah i mean i don't think any other bands thinking about lighting an ambulance on fire and having that as your you know as your album art it is one of a kind yeah it definitely is. Yeah, <laughs> it but, is. I'm, I'm. I was stoked on it when we got it back. I was like, "Now nah, this, this is the shit that I like." <laughs> yeah, like you said, you know, it's out in the middle of like it. It seems to be like a countryside type of deal. No yep. one's around. Like this fire is not going to be out anytime fucking soon. It's, nope. Basically, everyone in it is dead, and mm-hmm. maybe except for one person, and then they're alone. Hence the nomad. Mm-hmm. There you go. See how you tie all that shit together? <laughs> yeah. Even though you probably thought of that like months ago, but <laughs> no, nah, we were just like, let's make an album art that looks cool. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. 
And actually looking at your the logo of the band, you actually have like the heart monitor. Was that always there or is that specific to this album? That is specific to this album. Okay. Uh, our old uh, logo or symbol or whatever you want to call it, yeah. it was a caduceus and we were all like burnt out and tired on that. That was an idea of somebody that's not in the band anymore. We were all like, okay, let's get something fresh and that isn't a t- rip off of the entire medical field. So... <laughs> So we got something new. Yeah, it actually looks pretty cool, and it also it it's great tying in everything. And mm-hmm. I see in like the order you have you have the hat with the heart monitor thing on the front, and I think it said what does it say chasing safety on the back of it. Yep, I believe so. Yeah, I mean that that's awesome that you're having like this whole thing around it. So yeah, that's pretty yep. fucking awesome. We're stoked on it. Yeah, that's a good thing that you're stoked on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're not going back to like the selling out shit from before, but. <laughs> yeah. So, and anyways, you have the uh, you have the Outer Loop uh, show coming up in November. You have the CD drop in in January. Uh, obviously, you're going you're going to tour in some capacity, hopefully in 2017. Uh, yeah. Uh, eventually, we don't have anything booked or announced yet. Um, right now. We're just focusing on getting the music out. It's been so long since we did an album that we haven't really been stressing the whole touring cycle thing yet. Right now, we're just stressing making sure our our album gets out there in a timely manner and appropriately. So that's really all we care about right now is the music. And then after that, once, once that's all said and done, we'll start figuring out the tours and stuff. Yeah. So as a band like like yourselves who has toured in the past and this being your second album, are you leaning towards, you know, going on a quick headlining run or are you looking for like a quick opening run just to spread out the word? Uh I do not want to go on a headlining run at <laughs> all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so fully it's a support run. We yeah, head, we're too small to be doing headliners. We do, every time we do a headliner, it just sucks. So none of us want to do that ever again. So it, right now, we need to be out there with bands that we can support, bring our fans to come out. Because if if we're on tour and it's super small and uh, somebody has work that day, they're like, oh, I can't really make it out. But if we're on tour with somebody and then that fan is like oh my god all four of them are my favorite bands yeah they're gonna make sure that their ass gets out there you know what i mean now i hear you there but eh, it's so. it's just the way it is for bands you know <laughs> yeah you can't all do an hour and 20 minute sets every night so <laughs> oh my god i don't i would never i wouldn't even have the stamina for that shit <laughs> oh god yeah you look at someone like you know axel rose or mick jagger who've been doing it for the last like 40 fucking years and you're like really <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, how how are you doing that? <laughs> I, I guess money and a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, and probably a lot of cocaine. Yes, probably. <laughs> but, I, I mean, thinking about it, though, like, if your only job was to be in shape to do an hour and 20-minute show, I think anyone can actually do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't know if you've ever seen us live or anything like that. We just run around like a bunch of idiots the whole time. So <laughs> that's why I'm saying I don't know if I'd be able to do that. Now, I think I saw you live, but I'm not 100% sure on this. Were you one of the openers for the All-Stars tour with Suicide Silence on it? Uh, not with Suicide Silence. We were one of the openers for the with uh, Upon a Burning Body and Dance with Kevin Dance. Oh, okay. So the one not last year, but the year before that, was it? Or was it uh, last year? I can't remember offhand. So many fucking tours. <laughs> it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't this summer that just passed. It was the summer prior. Okay, that was the one that played at uh, Game Changer World, right? For the New Jersey show? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. H- how is that venue? I still haven't made it out there. Game Changer? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Oops, I can't really hear you that well. But uh, Game Changer's sick. Yeah, it's really cool. It's a very large venue. It has a stage on both sides. It's on the one side for like the smaller bands, obviously, and yeah. then a bigger stage for the bigger bands. Uh, okay. We yeah. play both stages, and it's it's a sick venue. Nice, man. Nice. Like, I, I hear a lot of, like, good stuff and bad stuff. Like, good being, you know, it's a big venue, and, like, there's a lot of space to move around. The bad I hear, like, the sound isn't the greatest on some nights, but some nights it's good, and yeah. I guess that's, like, any venue, if you think about well, it. The sound there sucks on the days that the shows aren't packed because they're 
and the room's so big. Yeah, the room echoes, yeah. Ugh. So, yeah. So, it, uh, if it's packed as hell, then it sounds good. Like, All-Stars tour sounded yeah. pretty decent. Okay. But then we also played there on another tour, and it sounded like ass. <laughs> so. Yeah. But, I mean, it's just the way the stage setup is, you know. You, it, you go to some places where, you know, it's – packed to the gills and it sounds like complete shit but when it's empty you know there's a lot more room like like place like uh let's say wellmont theater in montclair i don't know if you've ever been there but it's it's basically like um it's like uh the palladium up in uh Worcester. massachusetts yeah where it has like an open ceiling where the sound it basically has like a good acoustic type of deal to it like you hear a lot of you hear it perfectly whether there's you know a lot of people or like a small amount of people in there so oh yeah yeah um cool that's sick i've never been there yeah yeah it's 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 not a bad place i mean uh montclair is basically wants to be like the next hoboken where they're trying to do like a weird like artsy thing like they have artsy music the uh, music theaters artsy like movie theaters and you know they're, they're just trying to rebuild it. get all hip yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah which cool. is fucking annoying as shit <laughs> yeah gonna have a lot of vice <laughs> yeah <laughs> But yeah, it's it's not as bad as Hoboken just yet. Hoboken is still like hipster haven, little fucking yuppies running around. But yeah, my uh, my dad drives uh, trains for Jersey Transit, so on some of his shifts, he says you'll see a bunch of people get on the train in the beginning of the shift, and then he'll pick them up again in Hoboken to bring them back, and they're all just f sloppy messes falling all over oh, each God. other from. So he says it's pretty pretty funny. Oh God Almighty! But I mean, yep. then then again, if you and I were like trust fund kids, I think that we'd be doing the exact same fucking thing. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean, what else do you have to do? Like, you get to hang yeah. out in your apartment, probably smoke weed all day. Next thing you yeah, know, we'd you know, be torn in a, we'd be torn in a fucking bus. Yeah. There you go. I mean, there was a uh, oh fuck, what was the name of that band? That was the exact same thing. I think it was uh. I want to say Drive A. I want to say like this was going back a couple cool. of years. Uh, I'll, I'll go with Drive A if it's not. I completely apologize. But I think they were made up of a whole bunch of like rich kids and their parents like funded them. Like they paid to get onto tours. They they got like a bus like all decked out and shit like that. And like their music was extremely subpar. Yeah, that's like ninety percent of bands. Yeah. <laughs> it's a. Yeah, I, I mean, but what are you gonna do? Yeah, especially in our scene where you know you you see a band like you know I I hate to burn bridges, but like a band like Attila should not be as big as they are right now. You don't think so? Uh, I don't see anything like too special about them. I mean, this is just my opinion. Obviously, I'm not ch speaking for you or chasing safety or even behind the barricade. This is just me. I mean, like their onstage banter is hysterical. Don't get me wrong. They're they're great live. They get the crowd pumping, but their music is basically just, you know, it's like random deathcore with very fast like rap screaming type of deal. Mhm. Mm but yeah, my thoughts on them is uh, honestly, I, I think they're cool. I think that they're doing uh, they're doing whatever they want, something different. You know what I mean? So that's appealing to a lot of people. So uh, they found something that works, and they're just kind of running with it, which is pretty smart because they're all doing incredibly well. But, uh, yeah, we don't sound anything like them, but I, I, I can't bag on them. I can bag on – I'm not going to drop names or anything like that, but we've toured with bands that never earned it, never tried. Like I saw Attila play in a uh, billiards hall when I was like 16 years old, and they were still going – they just put out their, what, seventh album? Yeah. <laughs> And I tour with I've toured with bands that never earned it, never tried to do anything. We toured with the band one time where their it was their first show on the tour it was one of their first ever. Wow! And they had a they had a bandwagon and all this bullshit, okay. and they were the most disrespectful band to us ever. When we've just been out there grinding it, wasting money and shit like that. So it sucks to tour with bands that don't get it and aren't cool essentially but then again we've also toured bands that are super awesome so it really all depends on uh who it is yeah D yeah so. definitely and also we found that uh it also depends a lot on where people are from because 
I guess since we're all from the Northeast, <laughs> the way people are up here um, with humor and uh, their overall attitude sometimes very much disagrees with the way other people are from other parts <laughs> of the country. And we're like, they'll think that we're animals and we're like, we're just their jokes. They weren't real. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But then we've toured with bands from the Northeast and they're like, we fucking love you guys, whatever, whatever, because they get it. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. It, it, it definitely is like, you know, where you're located because a joke up in like the Northeast, like, you know, I, I'm sure you're like this way with your friends. Like, like all, all me and my friends, we always like rag on each other. We call each other like some horrific fucking names, but you know, it's all out of love. And like, yeah. if, like someone from the South heard like half the, sh half the convo that we would have, they're like, what in the hell? Do you guys like hate each other? No, yeah. no, no, no. It's a geographical thing, I guess. And yeah, you know. that's literally exactly what happened. <laughs> Said stuff to people. And they didn't realize that we weren't serious. So at the end of the day, it ended with us apologizing and shit like that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I guess, you know, they're not coming out to see a comedian. Like, if you take a comedian, let's say, like, um, you know, David Tell, like a really filthy New York City comic who, who like, grinded for fucking years. He plays a show down at Al Atlanta at, like, you know, some random small club. And he tells, like, some of the most filthiest fucking things you'll ever hear in your life. And people are like, oh, my God, what in the hell? And then, you know, they, so they sort of yeah. understand it because he's a comic. But, like, if you take a band, you know, like... You know, even like Attila, even though they're from the South, but if you bring them to like, you know, Bumblefuck, Nebraska, and have them like say, like screaming shit out, like "suck my fuck" or like this and that, and like people are gonna be like, "The fuck is going on here?" <laughs> yeah, some people just don't don't get it. <laughs> yeah. I've had to apologize a few times for stuff that I wasn't even serious about. Oh God, that, that's gotta be like one of the worst. It's incredibly annoying, and then I'm just like, "All right, man." I guess I know who I can't joke with now. Yeah, really. <laughs> yep. No, but it'd be the worst if you like make like a little sudden joke on stage, like two songs in, and then you realize you know the crowd is now against you, and you have like four more to go. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. That's happened too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you just what? have to like, keep like a journal. Be like, okay, uh, can't can't say a pussy joke in Georgia, but in yeah, you right. know Texas, it kills. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, I can't say anything in this state, but in this state, I can say whatever the hell I want. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, you know, we are all one country, but we are fucking way different types of people out here. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, even with New Jersey, like, there is a, there's a complete difference between a lot of people from North Jersey and South Jersey. And I'm sure Absol you've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I feel like they're two different places exactly but now now i have to ask you as a fellow jersey person do you believe in a central new jersey a central new jersey yes um yeah like uh it is a place <laughs> okay. like uh like what do you in what aspect like do you like a uh, starland ballroom i say is central jersey oh yeah, yeah yeah i could i could say i could agree with that i think central jersey is like uh like, um, northern, like, where northern Burlington, like, Florence and Hamilton area. Uh-huh. Up to, like, around there, like, Howell and stuff. Okay, yeah. I, I, I go with that. Like, I, if you were going to go, like, coastal, I'd say, basically, Elizabeth and up is Newark. Anything past, like, you know, Elizabeth, like, we're talking, like, Linden or, uh, like, the Raritan Bridge, I say that's central New Jersey, until you get to, like, maybe Asbury Park, so, like, 105 on the parkway and down, I say that's South Jersey. Oh, yeah, yeah. South Jersey, I think, starts in, in Burlington County. Burlington, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I suck with New Jersey ge geography. <laughs> uh, Burlington County is, like, uh... You know, like where McGuire Air Force Base and stuff is. Oh, okay. All right. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yeah. There and down. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. But like a lot of people that I talk with, they're like, no, there's no such thing as Central Jersey. It's either north or south. And it's like, no, retards. It's not it. <laughs> yeah. I feel you. Yeah. Eh, I, I, it, it, we're 
definitely playing into the stereotype of Jersey people talking about Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Like, there's so many outsiders who are like, oh, New Jersey, the armpit of America. Like, they, they think that all we do is talk about New Jersey and everyone in New Jersey is from the Jersey Shore. Like, I'm talking about the oh, TV yeah. show. Yeah. Yeah, even though those people are from New York. Are you originally from North Jersey? Yeah, I've lived in Kearney my whole life. Oh, uh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it, yeah that, that, that was the funny part. When that show became huge where everyone thought they were from New Jersey, but only like one or two people were from New Jersey. Yeah. That's not even what New Jersey's like. No, not at all. Yeah. But, like, I mean, I, I could be like a New Jersey, I guess, biased. Obviously, I live in New Jersey. But I think yeah. it honestly is the best state just because you're an hour away from anything. Like, think about it. No matter where you are, you're an hour away from a casino. You're an hour away from a beach. You're an hour away from, like, a wooded area. You're an hour away from a farmland. You're an hour away from mm -hmm. a ginormous city. No matter where you are, it's either Philly or New York is right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I feel you on that. With the accessibility, we are really close to absolutely everything. Um, Jersey, I like it. I don't have any problem with it, but I hate the winter, so that's why I'm trying to move south. Nice. How, how south are you talking? Like North Carolina, South Carolina area. Yes, that is exactly the plan with my girlfriend and I. Yep. Because we... Uh, she has family down in the Winston-Salem area, and it is fucking beautiful down there. Like, the people are so nice. Like, nobody's, like, in a real rush. Nobody drives like an asshole. It's fucking yep. very chill down there. Yep. I've been looking at, like, places to live and shit down there just for fun recently uh, with uh, my fiancé. So we're trying to figure it out, but in good time. It will happen. Yeah, really? And how, how, old, are you if you, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 26. Okay, yeah. So I'm I'm 27. We're around the same area. Yeah. So I mean, we both know what it is, what it's like to grow up, you know, with the, you know, in the places that we did, with the friends that we have, you know, it's it's not like, you know, obviously I want I'm gonna age myself here, you know, it's not like, you know, we didn't grow up with the with the internet, like we didn't grow up with like text messaging either, like it, uh -huh. yeah, it came around like when we were right like, when we were starting high school. That's when like mm -hmm. AOL kicked in. Mm -hmm. So, like, we actually had to make friends with people. Like, we went outside and played and shit like that. Obviously, I'm fucking dating myself here, but I don't care. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with you. I uh, I was never inside. I hated being inside. If I was in trouble. <laughs> yeah, see, that was, a, that was a punishment, being inside. Yeah, now it's a punishment for kids to have to go outside. Yeah, <laughs> ain't that some shit. Now you're going to go and socialize without your cellular phone. You know, it's... yeah. I didn't even have one until I was 13, and it was only so that my parents could find me. Same and, here, man. Yeah. And it didn't do anything. And the only man on it was a frog. The only what was a frog? The only background I could make on my phone was a frog. Like, oh, it, wow. my phone didn't do anything. Okay, yeah. Did you have snake on your phone? I don't even know. I can't even remember. Oh, damn, man. That, that was the shit, dude. I, I was like, Snake, this is so awesome, yeah. man. I could play this shit for hours. Not thinking about, you know, 10, 15 years later where you could play like a full – you could you could play like fucking Grand Theft Auto on your phone. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's ridiculous. Oh, God almighty. I mean, that that's where technology is heading. Like, you know, that was – you know, high school for me was 10 years ago, man. I graduated high school in 2006. And, yeah. you know, I remember having like a Motorola Razor. I'm like, shit's never going to get better than this. You know, we, yeah. like the iPod just came out. I'm like, that's all you really need. You have a cell phone. You have an iPod. You could bring the camera with you. You know, you have the G GPS is like still kind of expensive. But, you know, you could get all of that. And next thing you know, 10 years later, all of that's in one thing. Yeah. Now you just talk into a computer. Yeah, dude. Like, sh shit is getting fucking weird, man. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I don't know if you, uh, have you listened to the new uh, Avenged Sevenfold album? Uh, I have not. Okay. Well, it's basically like a concept album about robots taking over the future. Oh, okay. So, like, like all the shit like they're talking about in there, like, it's basically like the uh, the book 1984, was it, by George Orwell? Yeah. Yeah, where it basically is, like, accurately predicting everything that's happening these days, which is crazy, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know where we're heading, especially, you know, in a couple of days with this election, but. Yeah. It's all going to shit. 
Yeah, but I mean, then again, like everyone said, it was all going to shit when Obama got elected. And yes, obviously some shit did happen with like Obamacare and stuff like that, not to get too political. But, you know, everything remained the same. You know, it's not like, you know, I've, obviously everyone's comparing Trump to Hitler and shit like that. No, it's not going to happen. I mean, Trump will be lucky to get like one or two things off that he wanted. But there's like so many things you have to pass through. And that's what people aren't realizing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not, it's not the end of the world if Clinton gets elected. It's not the end of the world if Trump gets elected. But I don't know. It, like, look, people will make you believe anything, and the mainstream media is loving every second of it. Yeah. But I don't know, man. I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there with you. Yeah. I mean, as, as long as nobody puts a ban on, like, music or, you know, bands touring, then fuck it. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, I I mean, it is selfish to say that, you know, as long as it doesn't affect our livelihoods, you know, who cares? But, you know, then again, most people are like that. You know, if it doesn't affect you, then why bother? Yep. Like, take the take the hurricane in Haiti. Like, do you honestly give a shit? Like, it sucks for the people. <laughs> it, it, you know, here, let, let me let me clear the air here. It sucks for the people that it happened to, you know, you know, that we had, a, you know, we had terrible disasters. We had 9-11. We had fucking Hurricane Katrina. We ha- even had fucking Sandy where, you know, we lost a lot of shit. I get that. But, you know, if it's not in our country, I think, like, people turn a blind eye to that. It's because of the whole out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. Exactly. Like, you, like take a place like Nebraska. Like, obviously, I don't know why I keep going to fucking Nebraska of all places. But, I mean, they – I doubt they give as much as a shit – as New York does when 9/11 rolls around, or like the same thing with like mm-hmm. with like the continental 48 states, when you know Pearl Harbor comes around in Hawaii, you know, mm-hmm. like you know, like some significant shit happens. But obviously, you know, if it's not in your background or if it doesn't affect you at all, then you know, out of sight, out of mind, like you just said. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. <laughs> uh, yep. But. Anyways, I, I think this will be a good place to uh, to wrap things up. We we promoted the album Nomad coming out January 6th, right? Yes, sir. January 6th. Pick that shit up. The pre-orders are up now. You get a lot of shit for little money. You, you can't go wrong there. You have uh, your the Outer Loop Records show on November 17th at the studio at Webster Hall with um, with Lauren Ashore, with Youth and Revolt, and Magash. Going to be one hell of a fucking lineup. And I think tickets are only like $10, so come on. It's like a local yeah. show, more or less. Yeah, it's not it's not going to be expensive, but it's very intimate, so make sure you guys come out. Yeah, man. So for the people who haven't been to the studio yet, it's about, like, what, 250 max or something like that? Yeah, it's it's tiny as hell. And it's a pain in the ass to load into that place, so make it worth it. So come hang out with us. Yes, that I do have to agree with because I've seen a you, – you had to take those stairs all the way down, right? Yeah, that place sucks to park at, sucks yep. to get our shit into. It's fun to play and do it all over again to get everything out. So come <laughs> out and hang out with us. Exactly, because chasing safety is going to be there for a while. <laughs> yes, it's a all day, all day thing for us. Yeah, e- even if you wanted to bail, you still can't even bail. <laughs> oh yeah, you can't. <laughs> even though, why would you with a great lineup like this? And you're playing what right before Lorna Shore? Yep, all the homies will be there. So it'll be a good time. There we go. This, this is out of every. This is every single band on Outer Loop Records. Like this is the four of them. You know, it's going to be a family show. A lot of great friends. A lot of great times to be had. So come on out, support every single band on the lineup because they're all fucking great. And I think we we might be doing a sponsorship for that show. I'm not 100 percent certain on that. We're still waiting on people to get back to us, even though that's been a complete nightmare. Sorry, out of outer loop, it's been a nightmare. <laughs> but obviously, they have like <laughs> they have a shit ton of things other other to worry about. So you know, we get it. But both Dan and I will try to make it out there. And the only the only shit part about it is, um, is the the path train. It it's what we take to New York City, and it's extremely unreliable. But you know, if there's a will, there's a fucking way. Yep. And that goes for everyone out there. So if you're taking a path over there and you're kind of hesitant about it, don't be. Because, look, when else are you going to see a, an entire label showcase all in one place, all in one night, of four great bands from the New Jersey area? 
And the answer to that is you're not. So get out there <laughs> November 17th. Fucking buy everyone's merch. Pre-order, pre-order Nomad. Uh, you guys are on uh, Facebook, Chasing Safety Bands. Uh, you're on Twitter as well, uh, Instagram. I'm sure everywhere, you're everywhere. Every single social media you're on. Yeah, we're everywhere. You can find us. Yep, and you've also been doing a lot of cool things with the Facebook Live. I've been seeing so. Big yep. Props on that, man. You're. I, I don't want to say you're an innovator, but you're you're using a great tool that a lot of bands aren't using. So keep it up with that shit. Thanks. Hell yeah. So, uh, anyways, we'd like to uh, play a song out from the person we're interviewing uh, of, obviously, a Chasing Safety song. Uh, what song do you want us to play out? Uh, Brand New Prison. Brand New Prison? There we go. Done deal. Johnny, it's been one hell of a time, man. Thank you so much, man. Thank you.